Hey guys, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk some mountain weather. Thanksgiving just around the corner. A lot of different things to talk about for the northeast and also the west. This is the little sneaker snow that I've been talking about. This snuck underneath the ridge of high pressure on west, dropped down through Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, and then eventually into the central and northern mountains of Colorado uh, tonight. But this is the view up at Jackson Hole, reporting a couple of inches of new snow up there. Um, that's awesome to see for Thanksgiving skiers. Um, that's just one of the things that uh, I'm watching right now. So as far as the Northeast goes, the one storm, and it's amazing how things change, right? This is weather. Um, a few days ago, four days ago, it looked like this 25, 26 storm was going to be a big deal, but now it's 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 a minor, immature, low pressure that's sliding through. But there are two other storm systems behind it, so now a total of three all lined up. The issue is that the second and third storms are looking warm with a track that kind of takes them north and puts the northeast into the warm sector. And I'll explain all that coming up. But So the sneaker snow out west, I covered that. That's moving through right now. But overall, the pattern turns more active for the west in general after the 25th with a couple different storm systems, colder air and more widespread snow all in the forecast. Here's the setup right now on infrared. So there's your sneaker low. It's kind of the tiny low coming through the Intermountain West right now, dropping south, just sort of following the jet. Um, the bigger low hitting the Pacific Northwest, BC. Well, it will hit the Pacific Northwest. That's the one that will help to really break the high and uh, push it south. There's another low behind that as well. And all this will end up in the Northeast down the road. So let me just uh, talk a little bit more. I actually wrote about this on my uh, blog post this morning, chrystomer.com, pattern through December 1, because now we can see out to December 1st, I think with some reasonable uh, sort of, uh, you know, forecasting. My bullet points are there. I talked about Jackson Hole, the setup. And then let's go into the Northeast. Let's talk about the Northeast pattern here. So this is the jet pattern on the 26th. You might recall me showing you a number of patterns forecast jet patterns for around the 25 26 time frame that had a big trough a lot of jet support that's not happening now that storm slides through um, on the 20 it's, and you can't hardly even tell it's moving through the northeast this is the second low the one that you see marked right there that one's going to take a more northern track and probably put most of the northeast in in rain initially probably 27 28 somewhere in there and then it will change over to snow. But then the same thing's gonna happen 29 or around the 30th and 1st of December, somewhere right in there with that third storm. So that appears to be the way that's going to play out. And as far as snow goes, all of today through the 29th, one to six inches, and that's it. That's what you get from the small low, the second low that comes through, but this does not count the third. But even the third may be mainly rain. So you're only looking at light amounts potentially on the back side in the colder air of the second storm and the third storm, the wraparound snow. All right, so let's go back to uh, blog post here, talk a little bit about um, the West. So the Western pattern is, is interesting in that it's going to be changing. So let me just show you what I'm expecting here as far as the west. So this is the jet pattern on the 28th. So the 27, 28, 29 time frame should be pretty darn good for the Intermountain West from California to Idaho to Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado. I think widespread snow for all those places, and I should say it's gonna be good for the Pacific Northwest as well in Banff. I mean, they're really, it's, this is a more widespread uh, snow pattern here that's shaping up. But the 28th is good. You can see the definite the dip in the jet, sort of bringing that low along. That's the 28th. Let me show you what it looks like on the 1st of December. Still active. That's the bottom line. You can see two more lows I've got marked there sliding through on what essentially is a big trough. There's two spokes on the wheel that will continue to bring um, waves of snow into the uh, the Intermountain West, including California. All right, so let's talk about let's talk about um, the timing of all of this on the blog. So I've got this also set up. Now watch the timing here. Into um, let's see, this is Thursday morning at six. You can see that slides through Colorado. That little bit of snow. Here's Saturday morning at six. 
And here's the 27th. Now this is the larger storm coming in. Look at it sweeping south with more widespread snow and that runs us through Monday night. Let me do it one more time. Watch the sneaker snow on the first day. Here it is sliding down through Colorado into Thursday at six and then it's gone. Then we regroup. There's a couple of days of dry weather. Here comes the next wave, Saturday and into Sunday morning there. And then here comes the bigger storm by the 28th sliding through the Intermountain West. All right, so that's timing. Let's go into forecast snowfall. And my numbers, we'll do it in two different phases here. So here's phase one. This is all of today through the 25th, and notice it's just light accumulations for most places. You know, one to three, one to four across Colorado, northern New Mexico in on some of that. Very light, though, even through the Pacific Northwest. That's phase one. That gets us through Thanksgiving. Now phase number two is more substantial. This is the 26th through December 1st, and all the numbers are pretty big here. They're all moderate to heavy, and in some cases extreme in the Pacific Northwest. But look at those numbers up there. We could be looking at three feet in some of those places in the Pacific Northwest with the that much more active jet pattern coming in. California gets a little bit, not as much as I was thinking yesterday, but um, Idaho should do well, Banff, um, all the way down to Kicking Horse and uh, Red Mountain and Fernie, really in the game on this one. And the Tetons, the, the Wasatch should do well. In Colorado, looking for probably 4 to 10 most places, although the southwest mountains of Colorado will probably do the best. If that depends on how far south that storm eventually digs, 27, 28, 29, that'll be the determining factor for Colorado. But uh, I like what I see down the road. Thanks, guys, for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Have a great Thanksgiving. And again, thanks for tuning in here.